So I just tested the inverse fair value gap strategy and finished with a 50% win rate and 3.5k in profit. However, I was able to transform this strategy and make it a 75% win rate and a return of 6k using data science and my knowledge in AI. I'm Money Engineer and with my Masters in Machine Learning, I've helped traders get funded and get payouts using data science. So in this video, I'll give you a checklist for the dodgy strategy. We'll look at a perfect trade example which happened just last week and we'll be using data science to optimize the strategy. And finally, I'll give you access to a free tool that can increase any strategy's win rate. And if you're looking for more data science tools to help your trading, a one-on-one -on -one live call with me and a lifetime membership with other funded traders, we're currently offering 30% off for Black Friday. So now is actually the very best time to join us. All right, so let's cover the strategy. So I looked at multiple of Dodgy's videos to find this one. And what he's known for is using the inverse fair value gap. So let me give you the checklist. First of all, we will be looking for a liquidity sweep. But what's interesting with this liquidity sweep is that it needs to go and reach a fair value gap. This is a very important step based on his video. Then we'll be looking for a V-shape formation and I'll cover how to make it very mechanical with this one. After, we'll be looking for inverse fair value gap and then a close on the other side of this fair value gap as our entry signal. And finally, we'll be going break even at the first internal high or low. So if I can put this to the side, let's cover an example. So I'm on Nasdaq and I looked at multiple of his examples in this video and most of them were on the two minute time frame. So that's the reason why I chose it, the two minute time frame. But according to his words, you can use this strategy on multiple time frames. But if you want my advice, you know me, I'm all about data. I would suggest trying this strategy on different time frames and then journaling each of those trades at different time frames and then choose the one that has the highest win rate and best return also. Because on the one minute, you might get a lot of signals to take a trade, but it might not be as successful as staying on the two, three or five minutes. So you definitely need to check that for yourself. Well, I saw in some of his videos, he was using the 15 seconds. So that's not at all my style, but if it's working well for him, that's all that matters. So currently there is nothing that interests me because as I said, we need a liquidity sweep and then price needs to reach a fair value gap. All right, so this looks interesting. You can see that we had this fair value gap right there that we reached and then we're currently rejecting. And not only that, we have this clear low that we just swept. So on some of these examples, as I said, I was looking at multiple videos. It did not require like a very important low. Of course, the most important the low is, the better. But I saw some examples where a low like this one, which is very obvious, especially on the two minute, is well enough. And especially if you put that on top, the fact that we just reached a fair value gap, then that's perfect. So let's now cover the V-shape formation. For the V-shape formation, he described it as using multiple consecutive red candles and then multiple green candles. But all of them needs to be consecutive. This is very important. So if we look at the inverse fair value gap right now, we have this one. And then also this one. However, since we have those two, what you like doing is simply combining them. So before entering the trade, we will require a close above those two fair value gaps. So let's just wait for that. And right there, we just got the close above the inverse fair value gap. So just going back to the rules, we got the liquidity sweep right there. We reached a fair value gap. We got the V-shaped formation. So we need at least two red candles and then two consecutive green candles, at least. In this case, we got three red candles and then two green candles. So we got the V-shaped formation. We got the inverse fair value gap close and then we can enter the trade. So depending on your risk appetite, the moment we get a close about the inverse fair value gap, you can enter right away or you can put a limit to the inverse fair value gap. But of course, in this specific example, the two entries are the same, so I'm better off just entering at the market order. As for the stop loss, it didn't give very specific um, rules for that. So I'm just going to cover the low of the inverse fair value gap around this candle. And then for the take profit, from my understanding, it's taking profit at different liquidity points. So we have all of those high and then maybe the last one at the top. But as I was watching his videos, I found out that most of his trades were around a 1.6 risk to reward because it was taking a lot of partials, it was taking a lot of break-even trades. So that's the reason why I personally go with this one because it just reproduces what he's preaching for. And to be honest, that's all right. So I'm not against traders who go for a one-to-one -one or even a 
to 1.5. As long as you're making money in the market, that's all that counts. And all strategies are different. So you just simply need to adapt your trade management to your strategies. For instance, I wouldn't suggest a swing trader to always take profit at the one to one. I don't think it would make sense, but for scalpers and for the lower time frames, I think it totally makes sense. The one thing that bugs me a little bit, however, is how fast is going break even. And Doji is known for going break even very, very fast. So that's not something I'm used to do. As you know me, I usually just let my trade run. So for the break even management, he said to use the first internal high or low. So I'm seeing one right there and I'm seeing one right there. I don't know if he would use this one. I feel like that would be way too fast. So I'm just going to use this one instead. So let's just see how this one goes. So at that point, I'm going break even. And I would have been stopped out at that point right there. Before price goes and flies. Let's just see if we reach that point. And we finally even reach that point. So price eventually went to a 1 to 4.3. But based on his strict trade management, I would have been taking out at that point right there. So what I'm going to do now is just backtest this strategy for the past few weeks. As always, I never cherry pick my trades. I always go into recent price action and you can watch all of my videos about that. And then I'll find all of the trades which fit those criteria and I'll be back. So I just finished backtesting the strategy and I was only able to find four trades in the past few weeks. Of course, this is not a big data sample. As always, I'm only guiding you on how to journal and how to optimize your trades. You should be the one doing the backtesting and having a sample size of 50 to 100 trades. Me personally, some of my journals have around 500 trades. So let's just cover those four trades and see how we can optimize them. So to do that, you will require a trading journal. So in here, I'm using the Notion template I'm giving to all of my members, which allow to give us some feature analysis. So what is a feature? A feature is a small part of your trading strategy, which allows you to determine if this specific filter is good or bad for your strategy. So for instance, on the last video, we looked at a mechanical daily bias that I was able to implement, which gave a boost from a 25% win rate to a 75% win rate. And you can watch this video in my channel. And those are some other features we're studying in my group. There are millions that you can study. So if we look at the data, as I said, I was only able to find four trades. Two of them were on the same day. And then the two others were break-even trades. For instance, the one we just covered together was this one and went for break-even because I went break-even very, very fast. So in all of my previous videos, we covered different features and different filters to optimize our strategy. But today I want to do something different because I feel like one way that we could definitely optimize this strategy is the trade management. So the way it's going break-even, I don't think it's very efficient. I think there are way better ways of going break-even. And what's amazing is that data science can definitely help us with that. So I created myself this tool for Google Sheets that allows you to know exactly the best way to go break-even and take profit. And this is actually the updated version I'm giving to my members. But I also want to give back to my YouTube community as we've been growing very, very fast lately. And I want to thank you. So I'm making the previous version of the script completely free for all of you to download. Even though it's not the latest version, it's incredibly useful and can add a lot of value to your trading. So just check the link in the description. So let's see how this works. So if we go back to the trade we just took, which unfortunately went for break even and then for take profit. Let's just study how this one went. So first we entered right there. We went into 0.8% in profit. And that's at this moment that we went break even. So let me just write all of this. So price started at zero, of course, 0% profit. Then it went to 0.8, went back to a minus 0.1. And then finally just went up to a 4.3. So that was the price development of this trade. And if we go back to my notion template, you will see that for each of those trades, I wrote the price development. So some of them went to 0.8% in profit and then went to minus one. Others went to 7% in profit and then pulled back to 4% in profit. And then others went to two and then strictly to the stop loss. So imagine what you can do once you have a hundred trades or you just finish your back test using whatever tool and then you will have your price development for all of them. So all I did is just put those price development in this column right there. And just like that, I'm able to know exactly the different ways of taking profit. Let's say I'm always taking profit at 1%, never going break even, never taking partials. I would get a return of two and a win rate of 75%. Always taking profit at two, never going break even, no partials would give us a return of five and a win rate of 75%. And you can see the results for each of those techniques. 
So very quickly here, I highlighted the top performers and you can see this one that looks interesting, which is about taking profit at a four, going break even at a two, and then taking 50% partials when you're going break even at that point. And this is the type of result you would get. And then if some people would prefer to have, let's say you're trying to pass a challenge, if some people would prefer to go with a high return, but a lower win rate, then you can just choose one of those techniques. And this is the power of data science. Using the same trades, this is the same analysis, this is the same strategy. And I just went from a 50% win rate with a 3.5R to a 6R with a 75% win rate. And then just a side note also here, because even though those two trades were break even, I still check them as a stop loss. Why? Because for me, I prefer to be a pessimist when I'm trading and when I'm reviewing data, because if you give me a 90% win rate strategy, but then when I look at the data, all of them were break even, then you do not have a 90% win rate strategy. You know what I mean? What I consider a winning trade, at least in this sheet, and you can see here the formula, is when the trade is at least equal to one. So for the people who just looked at the data and, and had this question, well, I hope this covers it. So I hope I was able to give you some value. What I'm doing here in this channel, it's not about flashy things, buying Lambos and everything. I'm just trying to give you value about what I learned while I was working in private equity as a machine learning engineer. I'm making those complicated data analysis simpler for people. I'm building tools that will actually help you in your trading. And once again, with Black Friday, right now is the best time to join a community. The price will not get cheaper than this because we're building new tools and new content for a community and it will get richer and richer. And if you want to see how I transform Casper SMC 25% win rate losing strategy to a 75% win rate profitable strategy, then check this video right there.